welcome back welcome back now we're actually on p4 and what p4 needs you to do you need to produce a design for a computer program to meet client requirements now it says produce a design now i've interpreted this to mean that you can only do you only need to do one of these so you can either do pseudocode or you can do flowchart or you can do some other diagramming thing that would work I'm going to show both. I'm going to show um, pseudocode and I'm going to show flowchart as well in separate videos. So the first thing I would do here is review the requirements and specification. Go back over the list that you've created and ensure that it is to some degree good enough to solve your problem, but it doesn't need to be perfect. And the reason I'm saying it doesn't need to be perfect here. If you make it perfect, if you have people go over it whilst you're doing it the first time, have your teacher go over it whilst you're doing it the first time, what's going to happen is you're not going to have anyone being able to comment on possible improvements. And if you cannot get anyone to comment on possible improvements, I believe it's P5 where you have to uh, review it. You, It won't really make sense. So please, please, please. I'm not saying don't do it good. I'm saying don't do it perfectly the first time. Okay, so we have to review the requirements and specification again and again. Requirements come from the client. This is what I require as a client. The specification, you as the developer, the IT person, you have specified what you're going to do and in some cases how you're going to do it. I don't think you need to go too detailed for this. You can only design if you know what you're designing for. A bullet pointed list is fine. A paragraph is fine. All this is again is a list of your specification and or requirements. Make a list. I think a list is probably a better option. A paragraph is completely okay as well because I know some people prefer to write in paragraphs. But myself, I prefer bullet points. It's a lot easier to read. It's very obvious where one thing starts and one thing stops. There's no ambiguity whatsoever. So let me zoom in. So this is my general description of what's going to happen. Now, this is not exhaustive. I've left out a few things here just so I can do P5, just so I can go and review what needs to be done. And I'm saying program starts and displays a welcome message to the user. That's the first thing that I want to do in my uh, list of things to be done, essentially. There's a short pause, maybe two seconds or so, and all the possible games are displayed to the user. Team one is asked if a single person or a team enter names and press enter. So I haven't detailed if the person says um, I'm a single person, enter one name. If the person says oh, we're a team, enter five names. I haven't done that here. But again, if you want to add that much detail, that's fine. I'm going to leave adding too much detail until the very end. Team two does exactly the same thing as team one, team three, team four and team five. They all do exactly the same thing. There is a pause again, maybe roughly two seconds and teams and all members are listed. So there's just going to be a pause of two seconds and it prints out. Welcome to the game. Thank you for entering your names. Team one members are team two's members are team three, team four, team five. Now, this is where. Again, I'm not being super detailed. I could have added something along the lines of if there's a mistake, please select your team. So maybe enter team one and go back and change the names. If you're if you've made a mistake anywhere, enter the team name and you can go back and edit what was actually done. I could have added that here, but again, I'm not going to do anything crazy. Just leave it and keep it very simple. The user is also type some value to continue. So that could be type actually continue or type yes or type go or type one, whatever it is. We ask them to type something to continue. Game one is chosen at random from the list and that game is removed. What this means, I'm going to have an actual list in Python. It's called a list in other programs like Java is called an array list where I have a list of things. Let's say I've got 20 games. A game is chosen at random and whatever game is chosen at random, that's then removed from the list. So the team plays that game and all the scores are allocated. I have one less game in my list. So before I said I had 20, now I have 19. Another game is chosen at random from the list. The team plays that game and the game and the scores are allocated. The same thing is done for game three. I had 19 minus one is going to be 18. The team plays that whatever game comes up and then that's going to be um, the scores are going to be allocated. And again, this process is repeated. I think it said roughly five times. So I've done that five times. And at the end, I'm saying all teams play the game and scores are allocated again. The, the score of all the teams are shown at the end winning team is congratulated again this is a very quick very loose description of what needs to happen it could be a lot more detailed but i want to be able to review i want to be able to improve so i'm not going to make it super perfect here all right so the first thing i'm going to do here is do pseudocode so these 
instructions or these similar um, terms or keywords were copied from the BBC Bite Size website. I'm going to put the link in the description if I do remember, and I'm going to also put this document on the website when that's up. So these are the typical terms. Let me zoom in a bit on this one. These are the typical words or terms that we use to try and describe things. Very, very straightforward, nothing crazy. And if you actually read what it says in terms of the actual keyword, it's very obvious in some cases what needs to be done. So we have input, output, while, for, repeat, until, if, then, and else. I don't make use of everything here. I don't think you need to make use of everything here. Let me just go through and explain what I've done. So again, this is just me describing what my checklist has in it, but in the form of pseudocode. And again, pseudocode is a textual description of the logic or the layout or what the program is supposed to do. Just It's just text. It's nothing crazy. There's no wrong way to do it, but there are conventions in doing pseudocode. For example, you would still indent things. You would still use common words like input, output, if, for, while, repeat, until, that are words used in popular programming languages. But in any case, the first thing I do here is I say output. And the way I'm going to do mine, I'm going to use the keyword of what's going to be done. I'm going to put a dash and then I'm going to describe the thing that needs to be done. Output, display the welcome message, pause process, wait for two seconds. Output again, display all the games that can be played, so the list of all the games. Output, ask team one if they are a single person or a team. Input, team one enters a value for single person or team. If a single person, we're going to say input, team one enters a single name. If multiple people, so if, so if it's an actual team team, um, enter five names. So they enter first name, second name, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, well, sorry, fifth, and they can press enter or they can enter one at a time. Maybe entering all of them and, and separating by spaces would make more sense. And then the same thing is repeated again. Output, ask team two if they're a single team or single person, sorry, or a team. And then it's going to be input, team two enters a value for a single person or a team. If a single person, team two enters a single name. If multiple people, uh, the team enters five names. So this process is repeated for as many teams as there are. I know very, very simply, simplistic, but however, for this level, I think understanding the logic of what needs to be done and understanding why people use pseudocode and flowcharts is more important than having a massive or a very well orchestrated program that's a very elaborate. The main thing is understanding why people use pseudocode and flowcharts. And again, this is a plan for the program. This is what we intend to do. This is a very loose one, but it's still what I intend to do to some degree. I'm going to scroll all the way down to team five because that's the very last one. So that process was repeated five times just to ensure that we capture all the names. And then after I've captured all the names, I say process game chosen at random from list of games and removed and remove the chosen game from the list. The process, play the game chosen and allocate scores. This is something that's done in the background. This is something that's done by me automatically. So I can say, I can randomize this. So I can say game one has game one is being played and I can just generate some random answers. So I, so I can say team one came second, team two came fifth and so on and so forth. I'm gonna show all of this, but again, this is just a description of what I intend to do. Output show the scores of all teams for game one. And again, the same thing is repeated five times. So process again, game chosen at random from list of games and remove chosen game from the list. So this is done five times because I believe they said five games. If it changes to 10 games, you do it 10 times. If it changes to three games, you do it three times, however many times. So this was the first one. That's the first game. This is second game being played. This is third game being played. Same thing being repeated. So pause the video and have a look. It's exactly the same text. The only thing I'm changing is actually um, the one, two, three or four. Same thing again, down to number five. So all the games have been played. Pause process, and I can say pause for about two seconds. Output, show the total scores of all the teams. And pause process again, another two seconds, and I can output again. So again, output is me displaying something on the, on the terminal window or on the graphical user interface window where I've decided it's going to go. And I can say congratulation message to the winners. And that's it, essentially. There's not much else to do for flow, uh, sorry, for pseudocode. Again, it's a textual description. There are videos on YouTube which show you how to do it more. But I think once you have some of these keywords here, you should be good. 